In terms of the trouble that faces cities and also states too, where are the signs of weakness, the, the factors that are the, the, the headwinds, and what are the tailwinds? For one, for example, we keep hearing how housing is improving. I know property taxes are a huge source of revenue for cities. Are these improving? Are these uh, not up to where they need to be or used to be? I mean, clearly not where they used to be, but, but are they better? all the time poor yeah, management where right. are these where are the real trouble spots that you're saying okay avoid these these are disasters you named a couple um, but one I know that's on your radar is Detroit which is a very large city uh, I, I know their finances are a disaster from reading your blog so so what's what's the, the status there um, so Detroit at one time had a million three people in it now it has about seven been in a ballet with the state um, to get some proceeds of a bond offering that the state done, state did on their behalf, but the city council has but just been sort of playing on the path towards bankruptcy, or you think they can pull it together? It's really dire there, and there are many, many solutions at hand right now, um, other than just really massive layoffs or defaulting on their debt. And it sounds like the banks made out pretty well in that scenario, that they were able to get paid on, on those complex derivative swaps, deals, mm -hmm. and, and make good on those? So generally what happened in both those cases is that the city went on a pay sewage system. Let's talk a little bit more about the role of derivatives and complex instruments swaps in some of these municipalities because one biggie that is just laden with scandal is Jefferson County and that's <laughs> a county the largest municipal bankruptcy we've seen yet. This is something right. that um, is nearing settlement according to you. Uh, just to give a little bit of background to our viewers about what happened in Jefferson County, here's a little 10 second backgrounder. Okay, so they ended up filing for bankruptcy. They're close to a settlement. How is the settlement going to shake out in terms of bondholders, tax? JP mm. Morgan, I know, was instrumental in what some would argue setting the stage for their bankruptcy. JP Morgan was involved in a bunch of complex uh, financial products. They were peddling to the county, swaps, mm -hmm. derivatives. Uh, in fact, JP Morgan settled in 2009 with the SEC. First. I mean, it's absurd. How did JP Morgan make? out of this deal they, they will definitely be gonna take some losses but bigger picture does this hurt a bank like JP Morgan because I've seen reports that over the last few years JP Morgan is anywhere between the top or the number three underwriter of municipal bonds so JP uh, be strong in this area despite the egregious acts one of the things uh, that, that seems to be a recurring theme quickly before we go to break is that a lot of these deals are negotiated privately and disclosure mm. requirements are not um, great. So is this a situation that benefits banks and dis, uh, or does not benefit taxpayers? Yeah, negotiated deals, you never know whether the issuers... More uh, about some of these uh, issues where perhaps parties are taking advantage. Also the impact of the fiscal cliff more ahead with Kate. And in what way do you think it should go? that they were right. owed prior to the bankruptcy, which is one of the tragic things about these bankrupters, could lose from the fiscal cliff. Because wouldn't you know the fiscal cliff touches everything and municipal bonds are no exemption. So first, before we get to fiscal cliff, one of the things about municipal bonds is that they're tax exempt. And the reason I understand that this is the case is because they are tax exempt. That makes them appealing to investors. So then that helps cities and states borrow for less because their, their bonds are attractive, which helps them to more easily fund the bridges, roads, schools that they're building or whatever. Is, is that accurate? Is that how it typically does work? Right. I'll just add one caveat. Perhaps it is one thing that is on the cutting room floor in the fiscal cliff negotiations <laughs> um, because evidently, according to the Wall Street Journal, this is one thing that perhaps John Boehner and the White House can agree upon that for high income individuals, they maybe shouldn't mm -hmm. get this tax exemption anymore. How would this impact things? Uh, well, in the underwriting syndicate. Okay. So. And just quickly before we go, why has there been such demand for munis lately? Have it. All right. Well, I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so much Thank for being here, much. Kate Long. All right, time now for Word of the Day, where we break down a financial term for our smart viewer, but just perhaps not the expert. And today, I bet you could guess it, the word is dun -da -da -da, municipal bonds, because we're talking about them. And over the past year, as state debts mount, we have seen a lot of back and forth over the safety of these bonds with headlines, including the following. Could municipal bonds be the next financial titanic or muni bonds still safe tax-free options despite doomsday talk? So it sounds like this is where our guest would fall. Uh, should we be worried? Well, first, how exactly do municipal bonds work? 
A municipal bond is this. It's a debt security issued by a state, municipality, or county to finance its capital expenditures. Nation bonds and revenue bonds. And, and just to give you a little bit of context, the revenue bonds secure principal and interest through charges or rent, such as toll roads, whereas the general obligation bonds uh, are supported by the issuer's taxing power. Now, for short, these bonds are often referred to as munis. And they are used to fund state or local expenditures, including highways, bridges, schools, that sort of thing. Now, munis are often bought because of their favorable tax implications. As you just heard our guest said, people want to shelter their money. However, this could change. As the fiscal cliff looms, both Republicans and Democrats have agreed to consider taxing a portion of that municipal bond interest. But some argue much of the incentive for investors to buy municipal bonds is due to their tax-free status. And without this, municipal borrowing costs are likely to increase potentially leading to increased defaults. To give you a little sense, total state debt reportedly exceeds $4 trillion. Okay, so that is how often they actually default. Yet according to Federal Reserve Bank of New York in a report issued this summer, bond defaults actually occur more than that woman uh, indicated and more than you may think. Uh, in 2011, Moody's reported there were only 71 municipal defaults. However, the Fed report, which looked at a much broader sample, including unrated bonds and industrial development bonds, counted 2,521 defaults during the same span. So you have a big difference there depending on what you're looking at. Now, we have yet to see the reckoning in the municipal bond market. Many have called for, and the future is up for debate depending on who you listen to. But now you know a little more about how. All right, let's wrap up with loose change. Dimitri Kofina, so glad you're here because this is kind of a funny story. We know you love Apple, so that's why we chose it. I'm falling. I'm getting off the bat. I know. It's okay. Don't tell us about it. Let's talk about the story. <laughs> Apple's map application has caused some users problems recently. We all know about it. They've been like this. <laughs> that's really hilarious. That's like a really bad practical joke in that example. But anyway, Apple had to apologize, or, or they chose to apologize, which was pretty rare for Apple. And late Wednesday night, Google released their own Maps app that Apple is now allowing its its iPhone users to use. So so Google Maps is back on on the iPhone. How crazy is, this, is that? I think it's pretty crazy. I just think do you think it's symbolic because I just feel like you never hear this with Apple. Not only did they concede defeat, but now they really conceded a defeat. They're like we just can't fix it. Google Maps is back. That actually, no, there's no question. That's actually something that I was thinking about the best operating system. And now there's just, it's just losing. I mean, it could just be because they've reached critical mass and they just cannot possibly grow anymore. Um, well, actually, I don't Google Maps I know, came I wanted on. It you think so, it's Apple? I wanted it so badly to be Apple so that it would work, fit Maybe with our story. Maybe it was. Maybe she just thought it was no, Google. No, she said for checked it with her because okay. I wanted okay, to okay, use okay, it, if okay. it if it worked and did not. Um, but maybe that just but shows Apple, that you should rely Apple on map, a map app, period. The map app is stupid. And the thing is, Apple tried this on the consumer's throat and they failed because they weren't as good. Their back end wasn't as good as Google's. Yeah. They, they had, a, they had a, their own client, but then they... they Apple is headed. Okay, their stock price was $702 a share September 19th. Uh, yesterday, it closed at $539. I don't know. we got to call Reggie. Call Reggie Milton. Yeah, we got to get him on. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about the Fed really quickly because Bill Gross of PIMCO had this to say about their recent decision on Bloomberg. <laughs> or if because, the Fed wasn't propping it up. Because if they weren't propping them up, the rest of the market would collapse. And also, remember, these banks and institutions where people house their money are leveraged. So they're going to get worried. And where are they going to go? They're going to go. As Mr. Gross put it, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to come back tomorrow. And you know, in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Lauren Lister. You can go like our Facebook page. There it is. You can give us feedback. We will read some of it tomorrow at YouTube.com slash Capital Account. You can watch us in HD on Hulu. There it is. And from everyone here, have a great night.